Okay, we're going to look at how we can convert between different units of measurement. Um, and we're only going to deal with the very common units of measurement, kilometers, meters, centimeters, millimeters. If we can always picture this diagram, we can work out any conversion we want to. So just make sure you know exactly what sort of measurements we're talking about. Kilometers, those are distances you might walk. You know, meters, that's kind of if you take a big stride, big step, that's a meter. Centimeters, about the width of your fingernail. And millimeter is, a, you know, that very tiny little stripey stripey on your um, ruler. So you know what roughly these things look like. Um, and I always just um, help myself to think about, well, you know, which way around would it go in terms of is it multiplying this way or this way? And of course, it's multiplying going from kilometers to meters, because if I've walked like five kilometers, that's actually quite a long way. How many strides will I have done? Well, it will have been about 5000 big strides. So to go from kilometers to meters, I'd have to multiply. And then that I know how to draw this up easily then. Times a thousand, times a hundred, times ten. Divide ten, divide a hundred, divide a thousand. Got my picture, and now I can do any conversion. So, for example, if I want to go from 23 meters and say how many millimeters it is, well, pause the video, see if you can get the answer, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so did you do this? You said to go from... Uh, no, wait, meters. Meters to millimeters, we've got a times a hundred, times ten. So we've got a CA 23 times 100 times 10 and that gets me to 23,000 millimeters. And then what about this one? If I wanted to go from millimeters to kilometers, well my picture says from millimeters to kilometers I've got to divide by 10, then divide 100, then divide 1000. How will I do that? Well remember from our decimals we're going to just move the comma, right? So divide by 10, that's going to move the comma to there. Then I've got to divide by 100, one, two more, so the comma goes there now. Then I've got to divide by 1,000. Well, let me put in a whole lot of zeros just to help myself. Divide by 1,000, I've got to go one, two, three more. So it's going to be one, two, three more, and my comma is going to end up there. So my answer is zero, comma, one, two, three zeros, chalk, five, three, seven kilometers. Now for area, things actually... Um, we can use the same, we can start with the same diagram, but we need to think a little bit because it actually does turn out a bit differently. So let's just think about if we had one centimeter squared, what, what does that look like? Well, one centimeter squared is a square that is one centimeter by one centimeter, right? And the area is then in total one centimeter squared. Now, if I want to turn that into something in millimeters squared, I know from this diagram here that one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So a little square of one centimeter squared is the same as a square that's 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And what's the area of this going to be? Well, 10 times 10 is 100. And so in fact, one centimeter squared is not 10 millimeters squared. It's a hundred millimeters squared. It's 10 times 10 millimeters squared. So if I want to do the conversions from centimeters squared to millimeters squared, I've got to multiply by a hundred or divide by a hundred. Sorry, this zero didn't come up nicely. And what if I wanted to go from meters squared to centimeters squared? Well, if I had uh, something that was a meter by a meter, it obviously would be a very huge square. What will it be? It'll be 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. So that area is going to be 100 times 100 centimeters squared. So can you see it's 100 multiplied by 100 here and there. And you'll get exactly the same if you go from kilometers squared to meters squared. It's going to be a thousand times by a thousand. And here, same story. So converting the square units is slightly different, right? But we can easily think it through by just picturing it with the square. So, for example, if I have something that is 50 uh, uh, centimeters squared and I want to know how many millimeters squared it is I'm going to say it's multiplied by a hundred so it's going to be 50 
multiplied by 100, which gives me 5,000 millimeters squared. And when we deal with volume, we've got a very similar picture to what happened with area. Because if we're actually talking about a little cube that's one centimeter cubed, it's something that's one centimeter high, one centimeter long, and one centimeter wide. And its volume then will be one times one times one centimeter cubed. In other words, one centimeter cubed. Now, if we were to go to millimeters for that, then what is that going to be? It's everything, all right? Your height, your width, and your length are all 10 millimeters, right? So the volume is going to be 10 times 10 times 10 millimeters cubed, which is going to be 1,000 millimeters cubed. So to convert to, from centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed, it's going to be you multiply by 10 times 10 times 10 or divide by 10 times 10 times 10. And you'll see the same story if you drew up the little um, cube. From meters cubed to centimeters cubed, it's going to be 100 times 100 times 100 or divide 100, divide 100 to go from centimeters cubed to meters cubed. And from kilometers cubed, and I mean, that's enormous space, you're going to have times 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000, or divide 1,000 and 1,000 and 1,000. So, example, if I have, uh, let's say I have something that's 25,319 centimeters cubed, and I want to know how many meters cubed it is. I better not put the meters right there, I need space. Um, how many meters cubed is it? Well, to go from centimeters cubed to meters cubed, I have to divide by 100 times 100 times 100, and so I get. 0, 0,025319. Very often when we're dealing with volume, what we are interested in is say we've got a container and we can figure out its volume. Really what we're interested in is how much can it contain? What is the capacity of that container? And more often than not, we want to give that capacity in terms of litres or milliliters or kiloliters. So we need to have a way to move from our volume, which we can get work out in centimetres cubed or metres cubed or whatever, to milliliters, litres or kiloliters. So we need two things here. The first is we need these two nice little facts. That one centimetre cubed is the same as a milliliter. And one meter cubed is the same as a kiloliter. So one centimeter cubed, you can picture that. That's a little cube that's got sides one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So it's a small little cube. And a milliliter is a small little amount. And that makes sense, right? And a meter cubed, well, picture that. That's one meter wide by one meter tall by one meter wide. That's a pretty huge container. And that can contain a kiloliter. All right, to move between kiloliters, liters, centiliters, and milliliters is exactly the same story as we had moving between kilometers, meters, centimeters, and millimeters. So we've got exactly the same picture there. So let's look at this question. Um, if we've got a container that's a rectangular prism and it's got length, uh, breadth, and height as given, we need to work out its volume. Well, you know volume by now, length times breadth times height. So it's 10 times 5 times 30 centimeters cubed. And uh, that's going to be 300 times 5, which is 1500 zero, zero centimeters cubed, right? Now, we know one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter. So we know that this is 1500 zero, zero milliliters. But they asked for it in liters. And we know to go from milliliters to liters, we must divide by 10 and then by 100. So we divide by 10 and then by 100, and we get 1.5 liters.